Breaking Gulf News New Delhi, Mohammed Sardaj has not lost his composure despite the fact that his father, Mohammed Akhlaq, was killed by a murderous mob, and brother Danish is battling for life in a hospital. Resilient in the face of adversity, the 27-year-old maintains that only a handful of people are trying to vitiate the atmosphere and appeal to the people to preserve peace and communal harmony. Residents of Bissara village, Dadri, in Uttar Pradesh, Aklak, 52, and Danish, 22, were dragged out of their house on September 28 and beaten by a mob following a rumor that the family had killed a cow and consumed beef on Eid al-Adha. The slaughter of cows is a sensitive issue in India, as some Hindus consider the animal sacred. Uttar Pradesh is among the states that have tightened laws banning cow slaughter and the sale and consumption of beef. However, in India, Muslims usually sacrifice only goats on Eid. Even before any help could reach the family, a crowd comprising over 200 people, including friends and neighbors of Sardaj's family, transformed into killers. The family has been living in the village for generations. Sardaj, who completed his higher secondary education in 2007 and is studying for a postgraduate degree, while at the same time serving as an aircraft technician with the Indian Air Force, was at the airbase in China when the ghastly incident happened. He speaks to Gulf News. Gulf News, how's the condition of your brother Danish? Mohammed Sardaj, he is still in the ICU at Kalish Hospital in Noida and is not yet out of danger. But, according to the doctors, there is an improvement in his condition. Having gone through two brain surgeries, ventilator support is being reduced to monitor his condition. His memory too was checked. We were afraid that he might lose his memory. Was he able to recognize and speak to you? Yes, I'm so glad he recognized and spoke to me. He was trying to recollect past incidents and informed the doctors about his education qualifications when they asked him. We tried talking about general matters, as it won't be correct to put him into any undue mental pressure as of now. What are your immediate priorities? My first priority is to see that my brother gets well soon. We both have been extremely close to each other and he would always seek my advice and never took any decision without consulting me. He wanted to become an Indian administrative officer and was to appear for the civil services examinations, but for now, everything has been put on hold. How are you coping with the sudden responsibilities thrust on you? There is nothing I can do except to shoulder those responsibilities. Life has inflicted a sudden blow and the brutal death of my father is yet to sink in. Just the thought of it appalls and saddens me. Do you feel let down by your neighbors? I don't know how to say, but yes, I am shocked and horrified and cannot come to terms with the fact that our neighbors, with whom we celebrated religious festivals, could actually kill my father. While serving the nation, I thought I could count on my friends and neighbors to look after my family, but the incident has pained me deeply. A very old relationship is destroyed and an extremely strong trust has been betrayed. What are your main concerns? I want to see that people responsible for the murderous attack on my father and brother are given the severest of punishment, so that such incidents do not take place in the future. At the same time, I appeal to my countrymen to remain calm. Such incidents can trigger communal violence and that will mean playing in the hands of the vested interests. Have you taken the decision to move your family out of the village? I am contemplating doing so, but have not taken the decision yet. I leave it to the seniors in the Indian Air Force, who have been extremely supportive to us at this crucial time and will do what they think is best for the safety of my family. But yes, once Danish is discharged from the hospital, we intend to leave the village, as the incident will haunt us forever. Several politicians have announced financial assistance to your family. Have you actually received any money, because most times these are mere announcements? I am told that the check announced backslash, by Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav backslash, has been received by my family, though I have not seen it myself. With politicians visiting the hospital, is that affecting your brother's recovery? I do not mind politicians visiting us, but I wish they would leave their politics behind when they come. 
it is not time for politics, but empathy. Instead of making unsavory comments, as some leaders are doing, they should not use the incident for their political gains and refrain from vitiating the atmosphere. Timeline on the night of September 28, after an announcement from the nearby temple that Mohammed Akhlaq had cow meat in his house, a mob gathered. Wielding sticks and swords, they stormed into his house at 10. 3.00 p.m., accusing the family of having slaughtered a cow and consuming it. They found some meat in the refrigerator, insisting it was beef, although the family claimed it was mutton. Aklak and his son Danish were repeatedly kicked, hit, and dragged out of the house. Police were called and arrived half an hour later. By then the two were badly injured. While Aklak died soon after, Danish, bleeding profusely from a blunt force injury to his head and barely breathing, was admitted in the ICU of Kalish Hospital, Noida, Uttar Pradesh. The police registered and fur against 10 suspects and have arrested 8 of them, including the son of a local Bharatiya Janata Party leader, who played a central role in inciting violence against the family.